Turning to health, roughly one in eight women will develop breast cancer over their lifetime, and one in eight men will develop prostate cancer. In life-saving medical news, Radnet Inc. gained clearance for their highly accurate MIR artificial intelligence algorithms that can detect cancer one to two years earlier than current detection methods. And here to discuss this is the president of Deep Health, which is the AI division of Radnet. Good morning, Dr. Gregory Sorensen. We appreciate you joining us uh, this morning. This is kind of some high-tech stuff, but very, very beneficial and can be saving a lot of lives. So let's talk about this. Uh, Radnet's new artificial intelligence technology, how does it work to spot cancer in so early, which obviously saves lives? Great to be here with you this morning, Kelvin. Yes, we're super excited about this technology. Basically, we're using the same artificial intelligence algorithms at their core that are in Siri and Alexa and so many of the advances that allow computers to learn and recognize things. But we've applied those to medical images, specifically to the highly complicated and sometimes challenging to interpret X-ray mammograms. Uh, these, as we know, can find cancer before you can palpate it, and therefore we can intervene. Uh, what's particularly new now is these artificial intelligence algorithms have been trained on very subtle cancers, and these algorithms never get tired. And so when we analyze mammograms with these algorithms, we've been able to show that the radiologists who read the mammograms get a lot better in their own effectiveness. And in some cases, the algorithms can highlight lesions that we humans might have overlooked as much as one to two years earlier in some of our publications. Mm. So Greg, what's the impact that this technology can actually have? I mean, how many lives could it save? Well, there are um, about, I think it's around 50 to 60,000 women a year who die from breast cancer and over 250,000 women, women a year in the United States who are diagnosed with breast cancer. And those numbers are roughly the same for prostate cancer. Uh, and the key to improving survival for both of these cancers is earlier detection. Basically, once cancer has spread, it gets much more difficult to treat and much more expensive and painful to treat. So catching the cancer early, which is what screening is all about, that's what we want to do more of. And we want to do that better with these artificial intelligence tools. How many you say? A lot, certainly tens of thousands, it seems like. You know, doctor, is artificial intelligence a new tool to kind of work with radiologists? We see this in so many other factors of life where the new technology replaces folks. So is this something where it's going to be a partnership or eventually not replacing, but, you know, maybe becoming the dominating force? For sure. As a radiologist myself, I certainly worry about those things. Uh, but really, this artificial intelligence is, is an assist. This is like your radiologist on steroids. Uh, you get much better when you have the AI uh, at your back. It may be that in a few years, some small fraction of the mammograms will have the AI clear them. So we radiologists don't need to worry about them. We can focus uh, where our practice and, and our training is, which is on the most dangerous mammograms. But for the most part today, our FDA clearance is certainly as a physician assistant. Uh, and we expect that for the next few years, uh, perhaps even the next 10 years, radiologists are actually welcoming these tools because it makes them better and the truly autonomous replace the doctor that's many years off and we know that mammograms have certainly increased detection but they're not safe proof you know there are some errors there as well you know talk to us about how it actually works like i'm a woman i go in and i want to access this technology a is it affordable to everyone or only people can afford it and then what is the actual protocol how do i know that it's actually finding those algorithms in me great questions um so first of all this computer-aided diagnostic software is being rolled out across the radnet locations around the country, and it happens in the background automatically. So when a physician gets a mammogram, the markings that identify a suspicious area are already present for them to see. So there's nothing you need to do. We're also very sensitive to the publications and concerns others have raised that some AI can be biased against some populations. And so we very rigorously tested this in many different subpopulations, Black, Hispanic, uh, Asian American, but also women with dense breast tissue, 
older women, younger women. And in each of these cases, the AI shows that it improves the performance of the physician. We've also even tested it in experienced physicians versus new physicians, because of course there is a there is a learning curve for all of us physicians. And in even the younger as well as the older patients, the AI improves. So from a patient's perspective, you really just have to make sure that you go to a place that has this latest technology. Um, but even more important than this technology is getting the mammogram in the first place, because even uh, the, the mammogram we were doing last year is better than no mammogram. Absolutely. It's just so nice to see some progress. For a long time, there wasn't any. And access for all communities, as you say, was pretty limited. So this is very exciting news. Thank you. Appreciate it, Dr. Thanks Greg for having me. So yeah, much. thank you so very much for sharing this new technology. Boy, technology is just saving it, lives, saving the day. It really is. And it, it, you can just see, it, you know, taking it from a sports world uh, where there are injuries that happen, and they'll say usually it would be career ending. And now people are having, you know, uh, that injury, that ACL tear, that, you know, the Achilles, whatever. Give them a year and a half, whatever they bounce back, maybe possibly even better than ever. So it's just an advancement in medicine. It's incredible. In technology it has yeah. been really good. We can say a lot about technology being harmful to our culture and connection, but then, phones, yeah. yeah. But in this way, my goodness, we're just, I hope I'm alive to see the day that it makes that kind of an impact.